Aimer again with another Mission Impossible episode review. This time I'm reviewing Season 2, Episode 24, which is called Trial by Fury. So we start out with Jim heading over to an office building uh, to get some sort of instructions this time. He finds a record player with a recording of what he is to do. And this time the mission is to protect a fellow named Santos Cardoza who is working to assist his country's liberation movement while its leader is in prison from other inmates who suspect that he is an informer. <clears throat> we get the usual team this time, but no Willie. Instead, we get Red Cross officer Juan Velasquez to round things out, and the team heads to whatever country they're going to. Officer Rollin drives the new inmates, including Jim and Barney, into the prison as the other inmates look on. Jim starts a fight during their delousing, that's a real sentence, exciting the onlookers and putting them squarely into the hole, and then into maximum security, where Jim believes a real informant must be. Rollin checks in with the prison commandant and asks to stay for a couple of days until the next transport out, and is allowed. Cardoza, as one of the trustees, brings food to resistance leader Delgado and takes his message for his followers, as per their routine. The next morning, a supply truck is about to leave, and the commandant orders a guard to shoot at its cab repeatedly. It turns out an inmate named Rivera was hiding in it as an escape attempt, demoralizing the prisoners who vent their anger at supposed informant Cardoza. Jim and Barney arrive at their barracks and get an unwelcome response from the surly and now angry group. A brief fight breaks out again, but the sort of leader of the, of the barracks, Klaus, says he admires the way Jim attacked the guards, and he stops the fracas, but he warns the newcomers to stay in line. Cardozo arrives with clothes for the newcomers and gets angry stares from the others. Barney winks and says he doesn't need the clothes as he plans to break out. The others tell him he was stupid to say that, as Cardoza is an informer. As in, the inmates go for their meal, they see Rivera being taken for burial, and another inmate, Spirizi, tells Barney and Jim that it's Cardoza's fault that he's dead, and they plan to bring Cardoza to the barracks to kill him tonight. Velasquez arrives with Nurse Cinnamon. They meet with Delgado for some questions related to his treatment, and just to, you know, get a report of how conditions are in the prison. Um, Delgado answers in a very matter-of-fact way. Nothing special there. Jim asks Barney to cut him in on his, on his escape, plan, escape plan, but Barney, in, in, in character, rebuffs him. At night, Cardoza is brought to the barracks through a passage under the floor by Spirizzi and Klaus, and the angry group pushes him back and forth along the aisle with their accusations of being an informer, intending to keep him going until he dies of exhaustion. Fortunately for Cardoza, the Commandant and the Red Cross duo arrives. Um, Cinnamon gets predictable ogling and laughter and gives the prisoners gift packages with two special ones marked for Barney and Jim. Spirizzi and Klaus hard Cardo hide Cardoza in the shower until everyone leaves and then Cardoza's walk resumes. To buy time, Jim gives Cardoza a subtle opportunity to speak and defend himself as a true political prisoner as the mockery continues from the other inmates. Jim points out that if Cardoza is telling the truth, all of them will be in the hole for a very long time if they kill him. The Commandant receives a message on a, wa a little wad of something, which he decodes, indicating that there will be another escape attempt. Guard Rollin gets a signal from Cinnamon's special lipstick as Velasquez picks up the wad. Rollin comes in and asks the Commandant to be able to search the prisoners he, he brought, as one of them stole his watch, and he is allowed to do so. Velasquez manages to get the wad into Rollin's hand as he heads to the barracks. The prisoners prepare to string Cardoza up, while unnoticed, Jim and Barney create some tiny weapons to stop them hidden in the gift packages from Cinnamon, with Barney indicating that he won't let anything get in the way of his escape. Rollin arrives, breaking up the throng, finding his watch in Jim's back pocket and replacing it with the wad. He also tells Barney that he knows about the escape plan, and so does the Commandant. Cardoza is brought back in, and Jim shows them the wad with the code. It's tinfoil which inmate Leduc uses to make or origami animals. The inmates quickly turn on Leduc, but Jim stops them and says that he and Barney deserve their shot to break out. Spirizzi agrees because Jim was able to find the real informer. The next morning, during the trek to the mess hall, Leduc breaks out of the pack and asks to speak to the commandant, but is stopped by Rollin and sent back to the line. Cinnamon and Velasquez head out of the prison with Rollin hitting their car. 
Leduc is knifed by Klaus, and Jim grabs Rollins' pistol and takes Cinnamon hostage. Barney grabs a rifle and points it at the Commandant, uh, who orders the other guards to drop their weapons. Jim orders Rollin and the Red Cross duo into the car, and the IMF makes a clean exit to the tears of the prisoners. Mission accomplished. I'm going to give this episode a grade of a strong A. Um, there's so much, so much good to say about this episode. Let me first start out with the fact that I, I really like this because it's a very, very unique mission. Um, it's, it's unlike, I can't think of any other mission that's quite like this. The only one that I can think that's sort of, that's sort of in the same vein is one that's called The Killer, uh, you know, which is the uh, debut episode of season five, uh, in which, you know, the, 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 it's a different vibe. Normally the IMF is in control of their environment or they can find a way to tilt, you know, the, the, the table to kind of work in their favor. That's not possible this time. This is one where they just have to go in and kind of figure things out as they go along. And I know that there are a lot of those episodes which are more like kind of like solving a mystery. And some of those don't work terribly well. But this one does. This is agent stuff. This is not just spy stuff. And I really like it. Another very good thing about it, the degree of difficulty kind of goes hand in hand with the fact that it's a very unique uh, type of mission. This is, you know, the IMF totally earns their win. I've mentioned that a lot in very good episodes. Um, and, you, you know, to, to, to just stay on your toes, keep your eyes open, you know, look for the clues as, as they go. Uh, even though it's kind of a simple plan, you know, have Jim and Barney go in as inmates, you know, say that they have an escape plan and which is going to get into the Commandant's hands at some point, and then find a way that once it gets to the Commandant, get the information out and figure out a way to use it. You know, <laughs> simple enough, right, when I explain it that way, but okay, fine, let's see you do it. This is something very, 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 um, it, it, this qualifies as a, as a quality IMF mission. Also very good, what a guest cast. Um, we have old standby Sid Haig, who we've see, already seen many, many times, and we will see more over the years. We, uh, he, he plays Spear Easy in this episode. Um, Paul Winfield, my word. There's, <laughs> you know, you, you, take your, you take your show and you add Paul Winfield, you have a better show. He plays Klaus in this one. And an almost unrecognizable Victor Frank as Leduc. If you've only seen him from some of his later works, such as Highway to Heaven and things like that, you wouldn't even recognize it back. Uh, and also, of course, Michael Tolan as, uh, as Santos Cardoza. He comes uh, up in a, a, a few more episodes over the next few years. And it's it, it, like, I, I just look at this and I'm like, wow. Uh, and none of these guys are wasted. That's for sure. Victor Frank as Leduc may not have quite as much to do, but, you know, for, for what he does, he maximizes his minutes. There's no question about that. The only reason that I would not uh, give this episode a grade of an A+, plus, even though there is action and suspense right down to the end, because, you know, there's no way you could have called this ending un un unless you went through the whole episode and paid some attention, I think. Uh, the only thing I would say is, like the episode uh, before, The Phoenix, really it's two agents in Jim and Barney this time who are doing most of the grunt work. The others, of course, have important roles, uh, but it, it, it's kind of ancillary to, to the main plot. So this is not really what I would call a Power of Five episode or anything like that. Um, good teamwork, but again, really it's just two people dri driving the, the, the main thrust of the mission. So that's why I wouldn't put it, put it quite right up there. But again, solid A. I really, really, really like this episode. Thank you for watching as always. Uh, please like this video. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. I'm getting uh, views and I very, very much appreciate that, but I'm hoping to get some more subscribers so that I can make it a little bit easier to uh, get other traffic to the, to the uh, site as well. And uh, please leave your comments. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Thank you again and I'll see you next time.